perfect all right so first of all we're gonna learn what exactly is meant by wave right wave is a disturbance that transfers energy without transfer of matter what that means is physically particles do not go from one place to another they just oscillate at their fixed places where obviously it causes like transfer of energy from one place to another so that's what wave is okay now So then we have, uh, you know, different sort of waves. Um, first, we're going to look at the um, uh, transverse waves and see what it means. So transverse waves are defined as waves that transfer energy perpendicular so this word is a key word it's essential to write it perpendicular to the oscillations what it means is that you know this is a key word so always remember this so what it means is that the waves are like this the waves oscillate up and down so this is another word for oscillation is vibration and this way the energy goes all right so you guys need to remember that some of the common examples of transverse waves are water light and seismic seismic you can write seismic activity is uh, just uh, uh, you know earthquake activity all right so seismic s waves all right then you got the So then you got longitudinal waves. In longitudinal waves, these are, you guys have written it, should I go forward? Okay. Okay, then we have longitudinal waves. So for longitudinal waves, these are waves that oscillate parallel to the energy transfer. So, between the two waves, the main difference is that one is perpendicular, sorry, and that's parallel to energy transfer, all right? Now, what they do is, they like close at one point and then far away and then close 
then far away. So these waves are oscillating like back and forth. And the energy is transferred parallel to the oscillation like this. The examples of these are sounds, slinky spring, you can actually put it like you can uh, show that on this and also seismic primary waves. You can also write earthquake waves if you want to. All right. Sir, can you please go up for a second? Yes, please. You guys can see both? A bit more, sir, like for the first two. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. I'm All right. done. All right, you guys can write this too. And then we're going to go forward. Let me see who's in, who's out. Okay. Pretty good. So Hussain, Kazim, Moise, Iman, Smiley, and Sayyid, Asara, Yusra, and Zen. All of you guys understand it, right? Nice. All right. So then, next, we're going to go to the how they are displayed, right? So the first graph that you can draw is between two things. You can actually put displacement on this side and distance on this side. And a graph like this is given. From the graph, you can find two things. First, you can find the wavelength. So you guys need to understand the top of the graph is always the crest. And the bottom ones are dropped. Then you just write less t. All right. So if, if you want to find wavelength, you can find the wavelength using um, crest to crest distance is wavelength. Trough to trough distance is also wavelength. Or you can take one complete top and bottom part, and that would also be the wavelength like that. So we can actually then define what exactly is wavelength. We can say it is the length. You can also write distance if you want to. Let me write it here. Length or distance between two successive crests or troughs. So that would be the definition. The SI units, because this is a length, is meters, and it is also a scalar quantity. You just need to remember that. Now, amplitude. Amplitude is known as the maximum displacement of a wave from mean position, all right? Uh, the symbol that we use, oh, I did not write the symbol for this, sorry. The symbol for uh, wavelength is lambda. It's called lambda. And then its symbol is A and SI units because this is displacement. So SI units would be meters, but it is a vector quantity. So we can say, you can find, you know, this by, um, this is the mean point. So going to the top of the crest like this, or you can also use the trough to find it like this. So that would be the same. Any questions, please let me know. Okay. Alright, you guys, should I go forward now if you guys have written it? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> okay. 
Now, <clears throat> the next type of graph we can draw is when we have displacement on the y-axis and time on x-axis. With this graph, the same things basically. So you got you got uh, crest. Let's write them with C. And you got troughs. So the way we used to find the wavelength, we can do the same thing to find the time period. So you can go from crest to crest, that would be time period. You can go from trough to trough, that is also the time period. And one whole crest and one whole trough like this, that's also the time period. Now to define time period, we can say time period is the total time taken to produce one complete wave like that. So the symbol of a time period is capital T. SI units of time period are seconds. All right, is it clear? And because it is time, it is just a scalar quantity as well. On the other hand, frequency is the number of waves produced in one second. Which means that frequency is given by 1 upon time period. The SI units of frequency are hertz written as h small z or 1 over second that is also the same thing and it's also a scalar quantity because that's just the count of waves that are being produced all right everyone you guys get it yes okay now the greater the uh, the greater the time period is obviously the smaller the frequency is going to be which means if you take less time to produce a wave, obviously its frequency is going to be higher. Now, the last thing within the definition spectrum is the wave speed, which has basically, it's just speed, which has a formula. So speed of a wave is written as V and it is equal to the frequency f times the wavelength lambda. All right, Caroline, that's very bad. This is the second time you're coming late to the class. All right, now, so, like that. Sir, is it one over S? One over S, yes, one upon second. All right, is it clear? Should I go forward now? Okay. Now, so generally we just want to write it as V is equal to F lambda. I just wanted to write it so you guys remember this and I'd like to move forward if you guys are done. All right. Now, speaking of uh, this, for example, in this question, it says that this 
light travels at the speed of this in a glass block in the glass the wavelength of light is this what is the frequency so you can use simply this one go to find the frequency and lambda will be 4.0 times 10 raised to minus 7 so you will divide this and when you're using the calculator okay most of the people they make this mistake where they just write 2 into 2.0 times 10 raised to power 8 they write it like this and then what they do is they divide 4.0 and then they multiply 10 point minus 7 this will give you a wrong answer okay so what you want to do is to avoid this mistake to avoid this mistake you got to put brackets okay or simply use the Oh, you have to go here, sorry. When you put the back, it changes the answer. So this is the answer. But the thing is that otherwise you would get a wrong answer if you don't put the right brackets, all right? Okay. Now, then in the next question it says which arrow gives the amplitude? Can somebody please tell me what you get? B. Yeah. Pretty easy, right? B. It's B. Very nice. All right. Then uh, which diagram shows? Eh? What did I do here? I don't know. The diagram shows a wave. Oh my goodness. Probably I didn't paste it correctly. Sorry about that. So we're gonna. Skip it or we're gonna skip it. Anyway, now we're gonna learn about triple tank. Triple tank is basically uh, a sort of setup to investigate the behavior of waves. Now, ripple tank, like it's all right. You can learn how to what it does. You can you might you know have to sometimes draw it. So. What happens is there's a vibrator that causes the waves to be generated like this. And there's a lamp which causes the light. And at the, at the bottom there's a white screen which shows lines instead of waves, okay? These lines that you see are called the wave fronts, right? And the way wave fronts are defined, which is more important basically, is that wave fronts are perpendicular to the directions direction of a wave or waves all right So they're the crest, right? Yeah, they connect, they connect crests moving together, all right? That's what they do. Now, what it means is that suppose if a wave is like this and another wave is like moving together, there's another wave moving together. So these lines basically connect the crests ah, well i have to draw it manually so actually what i'm saying is that the wave is moving this way this is the direction of wave and these are wave fronts And you also need to remember they connect crests together. So if you look at the distance, like there's crest, crest, crest. So between one wave front to another, you can also find the wavelengths through that. All right, you guys understand this? 
Caroline and Hussein and Kazan. Okay, Kazan did. All right, Moiz and Smiley and Imad, Sayyid Azhar. Yes, sir. And Yusra, what about you? And Zena. Okay, pretty good. Now, then, Wait a second, please. So, for example, in this question, that, that's very important to understand. In this question, it says the diagram shows a wave before it reflects from a barrier. Which labeled section of the diagram represents a wave front? What do you guys think is a wave front? Let's see. Obviously, it is C because these are the vertical lines and this is the direction of the wave. This can't be the answer, right? Very good. So then, uh, this one, I think I'll give it to you. This has homework. It's pretty easy. I'm going to go forward. Now, before we go into uh, reflection, I just want to tell you, when you look at reflection, any kind of reflection, whether it's light, uh, water, sound, whatever, reflection follows two basic laws the first law is which is the most important that the angle of incidence i is always equal to the angle of reflection r the other is law is that the reflect the incident wave and reflected waves are both in the same plane what it means is that basically anything in the world can be regarded as a 3d plane like y x z so if suppose there's like on the x-axis like there is reflection happening and this is y-axis if the reflection is happening this way it will go back into x-axis it can't go up like this do you guys understand so it will stay in the same plane this is what the second law means is it clear so it will always be just yes sir you need yeah yes, sir. now how do we draw reflection this is the type of question that you guys need to understand okay now because I said that the angle of incidence has to be equal to angle of reflection, what it means is that when you're drawing anything, whatever angle is this one, and it reflects back at the, this angle, so you draw a normal line. Normal line is basically a line that is 90 degree to the surface where it hits, right? And the ray because this is the incident ray so this will be i and this will be r so they should be equal at all times right so and this is the type of question that we're going to do this so you can quickly draw this and then we'll move forward Okay, hold on, please. Um, sir, can you explain the second book? Yes.
All right. So second law basically means that the plane, plane means x planes or, or y plane, which means anything in the world has a 3D sort of matrix like this. Do you understand? Yes, sir. It could be like this, right? So what I'm saying is that if suppose reflection is happening in x axis, which means there was a wave that came and hit here. Now, the incident wave and the reflected wave will stay in the x-axis. It can't go in the y-axis. This is what the uh, law says. All right. Okay. Sir, thank you. Okay. Now, well, that's not very important. They're gonna. They they're only going to stick here. But I just wanted to make sure that you know both laws. But this law is not very important. All right. Because they're not going to ask you much about it. Anyway. So now looking at this question, it says draw three crest of incident wave. So what are we going to do about it? So first of all, when uh, such a question comes in the exam, you're gonna, basically I'm gonna take a picture of it, okay? Uh, wait a second, and then I'm gonna help you understand. So we're gonna make it smaller, okay, never mind. So you wanna take your ruler and you're gonna complete the direction we're going to put right here and then you're gonna basically continue oh this is not accurate right so we're gonna just move it just on top of this arrow like this and then we're gonna continue making extend this line till here okay where it touches this is the point where we have to draw a normal line. Normal line is 90 degrees to the surface. So I have like, you can use it, you can use a ruler, you can use a protractor to find where it is making 90 degrees, right? So once we have done this, we should then measure the angle. Like this is 90 degrees and this angle shows me somewhat like, let me put it here. This is like 50, right? So 90 minus 50 means this has to be this has to be 40 degrees which is our angle r do you guys understand this yes so i have to make it means the incident angle should also be 40 degrees so 90 minus i have to draw the same thing here put it on 50 we have 90 minus 50 is 40 so I'm going to extend this line like this, okay? So just to verify, this is 50 degrees, right? Oh, it's, yeah, 50 and then 90 till here. So this angle has to be angle of incidence and 40 degrees. It's going like this. Do you, do you understand, everyone? No. Yes, sir. The next thing you're going to do is I'm just going to make three this line that we have drawn the 50 degree one like this this line we have to draw uh, crests of this wave like the crest uh, sorry wave fronts of the incident wave such that they're always you know perpendicular so they're going to be like this and make sure that the wavelength stays the same so you just need to make three so right now what we've done is, mm. yes. So the lines you draw, wouldn't they be 90 degrees to the thing we've drawn? 90 degrees to the direction wave. Pattern. Yeah, they are 90 degrees. Okay. Do you, do you see? Right? So this, this is why it is very important to understand that this, this question all right, that comes a lot of times and you need to basically learn, uh, you have to apply the law and then draw three crests. That's why it's a three mark question, right? Is it clear? Yes. So I'm going to copy this and you guys should do it on your own uh, when you have you know, time, when you're submitting this because obviously it will help you, you know, figure out this much better. Okay. So 
now that I've done this, the next thing you guys need to understand is that basically in this diagram, just edit it. That, that when you're doing this, you guys should remember the crests are like the wave fronts are 90 degrees to the both lines and the other would be like this. The other thing you guys should remember is that the wavelength here should be the same wavelength here so the spacing of the lines should be the same like at least it should look to the eye that you've tried to draw them um, with the same amount of spacing all right is it clear everyone all right in this question this, uh, these lines are wave fins, not the the wave no wave we don't yeah. yeah, 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 go on. We don't reflect these lines like yeah. as rays. Yeah, we just draw wave fronts because the real waves would be like this. Do you understand? They're going like this. Oh. So you can't make so many waves like this, right? So we have to make the wave fronts instead. You get it? Oh, yes. Okay, very nice. Now, uh, the next question is basically, it says, describe a label diagram, an experiment using waterways that shows reflection of wave fronts that occur at a straight barrier. So this is basically the same thing, the same diagram we have to do. But now we have to basically, with the ex we have to explain it with the experiment, all right? So what you're gonna do is, first of all, you're gonna make a box like this all right and on that box just put a barrier like this like that and just make, paint it a bit barrier then you say and then suppose this is the direction of the wave incident wave and then you draw a normal line and then you put it like this okay how do i know it comes from here because the angle i should be equal to angle r then what you want to do is you're going to make wave fronts wave front should be um, made with you know gear perpendicular to them like this and then you have to make wave fronts here as well with the same distance part is it clear everyone yes yes sir okay so generally because this chapter involves a lot of drawing so we just need to be a little bit careful with this and uh, unnecessary mistakes uh, well you shouldn't do it unnecessary mistakes at all okay just a second please All right, so, and then the question is, wh how do we explain this? Because obviously any type of um, experiment is done using, you know, um, you can make uh, basically uh, these waves using um, a ripple tank, right? So that's how we demonstrate it. All right, okay. So then we would basically write that um, four points here. Let's write it down. You guys also copy this because this, this is important, all right? So we're gonna say that ripple tank needs to be used And the, the waves are displayed, displayed onto the screen below 
the ripple tank. Then using a camera some people use this uh, device called a uh, stroboscope that's basically that causes waves to feel like they're uh, taking pictures right camera using camera film the movement of waves hitting a solid usually we take a metal because it doesn't absorb waves so metal barrier all right we just need to demonstrate right oh it has to be a straight barrier oh my goodness that's not fair that's not fair okay then i i'll have to draw this again sorry using camera stroboscope film the movement of waves hitting the barrier and reflecting back at the same angle all right so what you're going to do is i'm i'm really sorry about this um i'm going to redo it sir? yes sir if it's a straight barrier then the angle of incidence and reflected angle will be 90 right yeah nine no it will be zero degrees not 90. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Yeah, zero. yeah exactly so i'm going to show you i'm sorry about that i did not read it carefully basically what they're saying is on the ripple tank what you're going to do is you're going to make a barrier such that the barrier looks um, that should be a straight barrier like this okay like that and the reflected wave the incident wave is here and the reflected wave will also be the same place oh, reflected okay and this would be the normal line so from normal line you have to do zero degrees because it's just parallel to it so the waves will be like this going and then after reflecting you can make dotted lines that they're coming back right like this like this is it clear everyone And the other drawing that I drew, that was uh, for if it was like slanted one. So that's something, right? Should I go forward now? Yes. Okay, so I think two marks will be from the diagrams, two marks from writing any two points, that would be fine. So then we're gonna go towards refraction. Refraction is basically a phenomena where a wave bends due to change in speed as it goes into a different medium medium means uh, it could be dense or less dense shallow or deep and stuff like that right so what happens is when the wave tries to enter any medium suppose in deep the wavelength was like this so the moment it starts to go in the first thing you guys should always draw is a normal line do you guys know what is a normal line it's an imaginary line 90 degree to the barrier yeah so it is a line that is 90 degree to the surface okay to the surface so then this would be your angle i I'm referring angle I as the angle of incidence and R as the angle of refraction this time. All right, is it clear? So what happens is in deep, the speed is more. In shallow, speed is less. So when the speed becomes uh, slower, the wave basically bends towards the normal. Is it clear? Like that. And then this would be your angle R. So you got to make wave fronts. But this time the wave fronts has to be 
closer to each other because not only the speed reduces but also the sorry let me just make it a little bit more far but then it would be hard to explain so the wavelength was this much and now in the shallow because speed has reduced wavelength is also reduced like that then again when it is going again to the deep you got to make a normal line this time this would be i and when it bends it basically bends away from the normal and now this will be r and now you got to make wave fronts like before is it clear everyone Yes, so frequency remains constant. Yes, exactly. Frequency remains constant. Now let's talk about that. So now there are two cases right now. One is this case where we're talking about deep to shallow, and the other case is from shallow to deep. So we're going to learn that. So when something is going from deep to shallow, and we can see from the diagram as well as well that the angle i is greater than angle r the other thing is that wave waves bend towards normal this is why the angle is different right then the third thing is that the speed reduces and the fourth thing is wavelength reduces when it's going from shallow to deep, everything opposite is happening, which means that angle of I is now less than angle of R. Waves bend away from normal. Speed increases. So does wavelength wavelength increases as well but the thing you guys need to remember is that obviously like Amal said that frequency remains the same in both cases it doesn't change at all is it clear everyone okay very good very good all right Should we go uh, forward? What do you guys say? Uh, will the rays which are first in shallow and then later again in shallow, will both of the rays be parallel? Um, in deep to deep? If they're like the same type of deep, obviously they will be parallel. If they're not, then no. You get it? exits the second medium and then goes yeah. back to the first so suppose here the depth was like four meters here the depth was four meter and this was two meter yeah then it would be parallel that's correct if the depth was different then it would not be parallel all right all right so what do you mean by parallel what she means is that this line what she's saying is this line would be parallel to this line this is what she's asking and I'm saying if yes. the depth here is 4 meters and the depth is same afterwards as well, then these will be parallel. Otherwise, they won't be. Is it clear? It is clear. If they ask us to draw it, do we have to stay careful about making them parallel? Yes. But right. not by um, using angles or anything. You just need to be... Like, it should... Be if the exam is looking at your exam, they should look like parallel, like they're looking like parallel in my diagram. Do you understand? Like you can't just do it like by this. Eye. Yeah, by eye, exactly by eye. So in the mark scheme as well, they will write uh, the diagram should look something like by eye. All right. Okay. So I hope you guys understand this. Should I go forward now? 
Yes. Yes, sir. So, in this question, then it says speed of light uh, in here is this. Th okay. This question you can do it uh, later when we have done light. So, I'm going to write later because this is a refractive index. If you know refractive index, obviously you can write it, um, but it's all right. Anyway, now it says wavefronts of light are shown boundary with a transparent plastic. So when it goes into transparent plastic, it says draw position of four refractive waves in plastic, do an arrow to show the direction of wave and label the angle of refraction. Now the issue is that obviously, um, we just need to draw it we don't have to you know draw it uh, like because we don't have any angles given so it's fine air is a less dense medium and plastic is more dense so what you're going to do is again i'm going to take uh, the screenshot of this and then we're going to work on it so this can be done through um, by doing it using your eye it's not a big deal all right you just need to make sure your ruler is like this uh, just keep the ruler parallel to the ray they have shown and first of all just draw a straight line till this point when you've done this then you draw a normal line normal line should be drawn 90 degrees to the surface like this and then when you've drawn normal line you, because this is more this is like more dense and this is less so it should bend towards the normal like this. So let me change the color so we can basically view it like this. And obviously this will be angle I, this will be angle R and now it four waves. Now because the wave fronts have to be 90 degrees to it, so I'm going to put the ruler 90. You, the way I do it is that if you see on my ruler, you see this line, right? You see this line? So in the exam, you can put the ruler like this. Like just place this line over it because you have a transparent ruler as well. And then it would automatically means that this is 90 degrees or you can use a set square if you want to, okay? So then just make four parallel lines. Notice that this time, when I'm drawing these four parallel lines, I'm drawing them closer than before. And the reason is because I know when something moves in a denser medium, then obviously the wave wavelengths become smaller. This line is not very accurate because uh, it just seems like it's more wide. So I'm going to make it again, put it right here. I'm going to make it again. So by I, it should look that you have tried to draw them um, as accurately as possible. Do you guys understand now? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, that's pretty good then. Let's copy it. And put it right where we need it to. Paste. Okay. So we need it here, somewhere. Okay. So good to go. All right. So then we are done with this part. And I hope you guys understand this. I'm just writing this comment so you guys can uh, put this comment. So uh, drawing 90 degree lines is much easier with a set square because that's already you know is 90 angle so that's fine just a tip for you guys okay now uh, all right uh, ismail and uh, kazim and hussein and uh, zainab yusra zara caroline you guys understand everything? Yes. Okay then. So then we're gonna move towards this one. Obviously this is like ice and air. So ice is basically more dense than air. So you have to bend it away from the normal. 
and this one I'm going to give you as homework because now I believe you guys can do it all right so just try to do this on your own and now we're going to move towards diffraction now diffraction is basically uh, defined as the spreading of waves into geometric shadow you can write it or you skip it it's all right uh, when passing a slit all right slit means opening now in this diagram you will see lambda lambda is the wavelength in all these diagrams and a will be the slit opening which means the gap all right gap size is it clear everyone what do you mean by geometric shadow i'm going to tell you in a bit okay all right do you understand what wavelength a means now right. okay now in this diagram what you're going to see is that when it passes through this region basically this section is the geometric shadow which means that waves can't reach here directly do you guys understand this because the opening is this front you get it now what you guys should understand is that if if wavelength is smaller than a much smaller than a that would cause very little diffraction like this the waves would just go in a straight line the wavelength remains same everything remains same nothing changes so it just goes straight do you guys understand this okay so if that happens then what we're saying is that little to no diffraction happens there is no spreading but in case the wavelength is okay, let me write with this right color if wavelength is very very huge compared to a then diffraction does happen but it's not very visible because so not very visible diffraction although maximum happens all right so we just don't take it as maximum because we can't see it all right that's fine so that's the idea of it and as you can see the waves are now going in all directions even in the geometric shadow which is behind the wall is it clear everyone the maximum diffraction however is done when lambda is approximately equal to a then you see diffraction clearly and they spread like this so the waves go this way this way this way this way this way and you see everything clearly so this would be the maximum diffraction maximum visible diffraction so generally we just take it as the maximum diffraction we look for it and the upper one it just loses so much energy because it's passing through a very small gap so it's not very um, visually uh, there so it's not very good all right is it clear everyone you guys understand this now the only tip i want to give you here wavelength speed and
frequency all stay same before and after they don't change all right you guys need to remember that okay any questions please let me know Yes, for reflection, 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 the frequency remains same. Yes, frequency remains same. Yeah. Only uh, like in even in reflection, wavelength, speed, and frequency all stay same. In diffraction, all stay same. In refraction, speed and wavelength changes. Only in that. Okay. Come on. So can you repeat that? in reflection and diffraction wavelength speed and frequency all stay the same okay but in refraction which is the bending of wave that's when the speed and wavelength changes but frequency remains same okay okay now diffraction is super easy for example for the first question who's going to answer this a wave passes through a gap in diffraction causes the wave to spread out. Which wave spreads out the most? B. Large wavelength through a, through a gap much smaller than wavelength. That is correct. Is it clear everyone? Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Large wavelength through a gap slightly... Oh. It wouldn't be. It would be A. Yeah, it would be A, not B. Okay? But sir, B is right. B is right? No way. Because they didn't ask anything about visibility, right? Yeah, but the thing is that uh, generally, it should be like the gap should be slight almost equal to that otherwise you won't be able to see it so that's the issue all right do you get it yeah please So we have to know about the visibility and the... No, you... Right now, for your best understanding, all right, I would just recommend that you should always look for the most visible maximum one, all right? Which doesn't mean, even if the wavelength becomes so large, it's all right. But because it's not visible, so we can't see it, so we don't know. Do you understand like that? For your level only. So you only pick... The answer which says the gap is similar almost closer to that okay is it clear yes it is uh, like uh, like it keep like it is a large diffraction much larger in reality but with the naked eye you can't see it all right that's the issue there's yeah. a very large wavelength and very very small diffraction yeah. you won't be able to see it so yeah, yeah because when when it hits the gap the gap is so small the waves have to spread out through that portion and they lose so much energy that it doesn't form the right wave that we're looking for so the most maximum diffraction that you can see and is visible and you can read you can work on is when they're similar understood okay always remember this this is, this is why i put this question up it's very important then in this one what do you guys say again keep the same idea in your mind that i've told you similar gap size almost similar to wavelength what do you guys say which answer then? what did you say 
sorry? A, exactly. Maybe. Exactly, well, they're very close to each other. You get it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, then this part where you need to draw. So it says, draw three wave fronts. Now, you don't need to do anything, just draw curved lines which are almost the same wavelength all right by by just looking at from the eye they should spread more because the wavelength and the gap are quite similar but in this one you're just gonna make little bit you know go little bit curved from the end but just straight lines okay of same wavelength so don't we have to use a compass no no you don't have to do anything in this it just should they should look like spreading nothing else all right Okay, yeah, do not waste so much time on this. Just draw it like this that I've drawn. Okay, now uh, this one I'm going to give you as homework. This is a very similar question. You just need to draw them again. And uh, this one I want to do this. Now, this is a pretty different question, and the reason why it is different because it says when you draw three crests to the right. You guys should understand that it was passing from this and there's a gap because there was a harbor and there's a gap. So now the waves would be the same, but now they will be like this. They will also spread like this. You guys understand this? Like this? Because they will go straight and they will keep on spreading like this as well. All right? Because this region, the region you see right now here, is basically the geometric shadow, where otherwise waves would not reach. And the only possible possibility the waves are reaching here is because it causes them to have undergo diffraction. All right, any questions here, please let me know. Then this question, the rest of the question, you guys can you know do it on your uh, by yourself because this is from that. All right. In this worksheet, I have basically given most of the questions as uh, practice questions because there are a lot of drawings in this. All right. All the other questions, like this one, is homework because this is from the, uh, refraction, uh, and this is the continuity. This is also homework. And obviously, that's it. All right, there are three questions. So the more you practice drawing these, the better you're gonna be, because the concepts are easy. You just need to learn. You need to be careful when to make sure that, but by eye, they shouldn't look very different when you're drawing. All right, the wavelength should be increased or decreased or whatever happens. All right, any questions now? Sir, can you please uh, repeat what is a geometric shadow? Yeah. So geometric shadow is basically the region, like for example in this one, 